Julian and I always say that with these shows, you can spend all the time working out the storylines, you can work on the scripts, but the one thing people want to talk about is the costumes. Not for nothing are they called costume dramas. Uh, the fact is the costumes have quite a big role to play, as well as the sets. The fun part of doing costumes for such a big piece is to find all those subtleties of each of the characters and the differences between each of the worlds, and it's very much backed up by the research. The costumes are definitely one of our characters and the prettiest character that we have. There are times when I'm looking at a shot and I'm like, this is why I'm a director, because it just looks so glorious. There's always a moment at the beginning of every shoot day where all the actors just stand around and admire one another's new outfits. The beauty of the clothes is undeniable, but I think the particularity of character that they express is really a delight. You look for those threads that will lead you to each of the character, the age, where do they come from, the social status. The costume is almost like another character. It's such a big part of becoming Marion and being in this world. My favorite is the dark blue lace with a gold bodice and just gold and blue lace. It's so unexpected and so beautiful and extravagant and fun. As an actor, when you put on clothes, they do give you a ton of feedback about how these people move, how they sit, how they walk. And these clothes in particular, because they're so structured, you know, there is the sense that these people, you know, they didn't slouch. They were composed, they were poised, and they carry themselves very deliberately because of the sort of the rules of the society in which they lived. I mean, it really informs who all of these people are. It was a big conversation between me and Kasha and Erica and Julian figuring out what is Peggy's wardrobe story for a black woman to be next to a line of white women in black and brown wool while they're in silks and colors. That tells a certain narrative. To have me in similar quality clothing to Marion tells us a lot about Peggy. When we decided that Peggy came from money, it was really important to allow Peggy's radiance to shine in a similar way to Bertha and Marion and not have this kind of higher exists even just within the clothing. You know, I was trying to figure out, like, how do we portray the old money versus the new money? For Agnes, we chose a very conservative approach. The sophisticated textures and beautiful, deep jewel colors. It's one beautiful dress after another. I have no complaints. Even if she bought them in Paris, at where everybody was buying their dresses, she probably kept them in the closet for two years until the very newest of the fashions became less new and less provocative. On the other hand, Bertha would buy the newest of the fashions and display them and be quite bold with them. Every day I would walk on the set and, and everyone's anxious to see what Bertha's wearing because every day was so stunning and so shocking. Even her day dresses have such extravagance to them. We have this dress called the peacock dress, which is this embroidered sort of peacock eyes and this shocking sort of emerald color and this hat that's about three feet tall. We knew that frequently the servants would get fabrics as presents for holidays, and then the servants would make the dresses themselves. So that's the approach we took with Agnes's household. The ladies all had this floral prints that came from the aesthetic of Agnes buying those prints for the servants. Everything in the 1880s was about presentation. You wanted to look like you had rich servants as much as you could as well. So we're putting the corsets and the bustles and little caps just to add that little bit of, we are a well-off family and our servants are also going to look good. The men were much more classic. We pretty much recreated pieces that were classically British. For Bertha's house, we took it more from French fashions. The ladies' maids were always wearing black. That was the standard of the period. For the footmen, we went with the loudest, brightest, theatrical phenomena of the blue and red. We knew there were special occasions that is going to explode and it's going to be just what that household needed. There was so much that supported this different journey of those two characters. Kasha's designs were kind of the inspiration for me. All the textures in the costumes really helped me kind of get a concept of where I wanted to go texture-wise for the hair. And I think Julian and Michael and Sally, you know, conceptually, they wanted it to be beautiful and soft and romantic and have still the feel of the period. So we kind of put a little soft spin on everything. The guys were quite simple for us to manage. Contemporary hairstyles almost work for the period. Facial hair for men was interesting at that time because to have a well-manicured beard was a sign of social status. 
Morgan Spector, he is fortunate enough to be one of those guys who can grow a full beard, and it looks terrific. He looks every bit the part of an 1880s robber baron. What was really important is that we keep the makeup look very natural. And that was really important to Julian because he wanted it to keep it authentic as possible. And back in the day, they really didn't wear a lot of makeup. When you apply makeup that is supposed to look really natural, less is more, and you can create a really beautiful look by using less. The biggest challenge for me, I think, were the big scenes, like the balls and those sort of things. I think we had 225 actors or 230 sometimes. On a period piece, you really have to put every single person through the works because they have to look right. Because if they don't, that can really throw you off. And when you have them all together in one scene, it's like one painter drew this gorgeous picture. You get the chills because it's just, it was so worth the work. I went to work on the Gilded Age because I think it's a really interesting period. People just had literally more money than they knew what to do with. Everything was lavish and ornate, and it was a very rich time visually. Recreating this time period is a big challenge. We built a full city block, with the help of visual effects, of course. But the streets are real, the, the facades of our two hero houses and their neighbors are real, and the wall that divides Central Park and the trees beyond it are real. First thing you do is research, and you compile a lot of uh, reference. And in the case of a period show, you can never have too much reference and then we talk about what we're going to build. One of the things we really wanted to map out was what are the central places we're going to be and how do we differentiate the old world and the new world. One of the big differences here is the old money wanted to be English and the new money wanted to be French. The Brook House looks much more lived in. It's an earlier period. There's more deep reds and browns and golds and it just has a much warmer feeling than the Russells. The Russell House, it's a cooler palette. It's not a house that people were comfortable in. It's a house that people want to impress people with and they want to entertain and they wanted to really display their wealth. They didn't want there to be anyone mistaking that they were, <laughs> that they were less than super affluent. The idea of recreating 1880s New York, where there is very little that remains, it's enormously ambitious. So this project was always going to require a huge amount of construction. The visual effects team on the show is amazing. They took whatever we could give them, whatever we could physically build, and they finished it. So on our city block, you could say 30, 40, maybe 50% is real. And, you know, 40, 50, 60% is visual effects. But you put in real people and you put in real horses and street cleaners and city buses and all of those things, and it, it turned out uh, pretty great. I really enjoyed the opportunity to get to do things on this scale. It's just sort of uh, picking your favorite pieces and then putting them all together, and it's all like a great treat for a designer. I mean, the sets are just insane. It takes my breath away every time I come in here. I know that there are a lot of people who would watch these shows with the sound off just to see the costumes and the production design. When you watch The Gilded Age, things just explode in your face with beauty because we really took the time to get the time period right. Right.